Hi Life Church 360. This is uh, quite a weekend in the history of the United States. I've got a long announcement for you. I hope you stay with me. Uh, I want you to know how much I love you and I want you to know how grateful I am that we get to be a church and that we get to love our community. Uh, 2020 uh, will be remembered, it will be scrutinized, and it will be referenced for many years to come. Yesterday, President Trump declared that all houses of worship are essential and that they could reopen this weekend. After his announcement, Governor Inslee did a press release declaring that the president does not have the authority to override the laws of individual states and his orders still remain in place. So that means that in Washington state, our orders are still the same. I want you to know how much I love you. I miss very much being able to meet together. I also want you to know that I'm a natural born fighter. It's my nature to stand up for myself, for my family, for Jesus, and for his church. My first response is to defend against injustice and oppression. With that said, I have also been praying about and seeking wise counsel about this decision as well as every other big decision that I make in my life. As I've been studying the statistics and reading through the news, praying about and listening to dozens of spiritual leaders that I respect, I have felt the Lord laying on my heart some specific scriptures and directing me to walk slowly and humbly through this process. Tina and I have felt the Lord saying to protect our community and care for those who are at the greatest risk. Our approach and our philosophy of ministering to our community has always and will always include what Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 9.23. He said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, and take up their cross daily, and follow me. I have wrestled with that passage in my life because I really don't have anything in my life that represents the cross. The cross is what Jesus took for us. And that's a very powerful thing to think about. Let it sink in. What would it mean for you and I to take up our cross? As I've wrestled with this, what I have come up with is taking up our cross is denying ourselves. It's putting others first, even if it means doing things that we might not prefer. In my personal life, I'm a risk taker. As a community leader, I always choose a more conservative and safer pathway, especially when it comes to health and safety. We will always do everything that we can to make sure people are safe and healthy. Because of the COVID-19 virus, the top scientists in the world have recommended social distancing and our government mandate has followed their direction. As of today's statistics, I just looked them up, there have been 135 COVID-19 deaths in Snohomish County, 1,050 deaths in our state, 96,920 deaths in the United States and 340,000 worldwide. That's with many of the largest countries not promote, not sharing their actual statistics. This is with social distancing and quarantine practices. Some people are comparing the death statistics of COVID-19 to the death statistics of the flu. From what I've seen, these comparisons are failing to mention that their comparison are using data from an entire year of the flu with no quarantine and no social distancing in place to two months of COVID-19 with social distancing and quarantine in place. I'm not pointing this out to instill fear. I'm pointing it out to say that I do not believe COVID-19 is the same as the flu. I believe it is much more dangerous. It is something that actually scares me as a public leader with people meeting in big public places. My nature is that of a risk taker. I take all kinds of risks all the time. With that said, I've had to learn to be a calculated risk taker. Every risk has a downside. In the case of COVID-19, the downside is death. That is a much greater downside than money or popularity or any other risk you can think of. 
I've seen the commentary about herd immunity, and there is no doubt that herd immunity is built up through the exposure of bacteria. Our, our immunity is built up that way, I get that. When it comes to COVID-19, we're not simply talking about people getting sick for a couple of weeks, and then their immune system becomes stronger and they move on. For some people, that is the case. But for 96,280 Americans, it means that they are dead. It means that their families are grieving their losses. It means that someone that they love is no longer there. In the case of COVID-19, herd immunity means thinning the herd. If we're talking about cattle, that's one thing. But as a pastor who loves every person in our community and in our church, Herd immunity means that people die. People who have family members who love them. People that I love and care for. People that you love and care for. And here's the reality. If you can talk about herd immunity when it's someone else's person in their herd, it's one thing, but it's people that would be in our herd. And that's something that I am not ready to take the risk for. Giving our right to gather in large groups for a few months is sacrificing something that we love and hold dear. With that said, Jesus gave up his life so we could have life. We're only being asked to give up something that we love for a short time to help give those who are at risk life. Another passage of scripture that God has impressed on my heart is 1 Peter 5. It says, And now, a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager, eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care but lead them by your own good example. And then the great shepherd, when, and when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never ending glory and honor. Christ suffered to give us life. We will suffer and we will give up many things to share Christ with the world. God has called me to care for everyone in our church. He has called our elders to care for everyone in our church, for Anna and Blaine to care for the people of the Spanish campus, for Ariel and Rachel to care for the people of the Warren Beach campus. It is a, a thing that we carry, and, and it's something we don't carry lightly. Our reality is we have many people over 70 years old in our church. We have many people with compromised immune systems. We have many people who are at risk. God has called us as Christians to care for our community. Yes, we are losing things we love. Yes, our freedom has been reduced to some degrees. But if we will show care and love to people, I believe the sacrificial route is what God would call us to do. I truly believe God is calling me to lay down my pride, walk humbly, and submit to authority. Romans 13, 1 and 2 says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Now, I realize the Apostle Paul, when he was put in front of religious leaders who said that they could no longer, or the, the government said you could no longer preach about Jesus, he said, Emma, is it better that we preach about Jesus or we obey you? I get that, that he said that. But that's them saying he can't talk about Jesus at all. Our government is not saying that. We can preach Jesus as much as we want. In fact, we are preaching about Jesus to a wider audience than we ever have before. So we are going to continue. I have never, and I will never take a political stand as a spiritual leader. I personally pray for our leaders. And when I vote, I pray and then vote for the person that I feel more closely follows scripture. That's not an easy thing to do in our political climate, but that's something that I do. 
right now I feel like the church is in the middle of a political battle. It's like when children are caught between parents who are fighting and each parent is embellishing their side in a desperate attempt to gain the allegiance of their child. The one who loses in those battles are the children. I do not want to be baited into a political feud. I do not want to make an emotionally charged decision that has the potential of harming and or killing people in our community. I cannot tell you how hard this has been on me as a leader. Please, please pray for us for wisdom. We need God's wisdom. We need to do the right thing and there is little margin for error, especially on the downside. For now, we feel that the right thing is to err on the side of caution. We are going to continue following the guidelines of our state. It is the more conservative side when it comes to safety. I know that we're incurring loss, not being able to meet together. Many of you have expressed very encouraging words coupled with your strong desire to meet. And I am so thankful for this. Along with that, I want to encourage you, every one of you, continue joining us online. I also want to encourage you to be the spiritual leader of your life and your families. In Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21, it says, So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to the wor these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. This week we're beginning a new series. It's called For the Good. It's choosing our focus. In Romans 5.8, God says that he works all things for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I believe that God is in our midst and he is working great things through the COVID-19 pandemic. He is the one who has put the governing authorities that are ahead of us. He, he's the one that's done it. I wonder if one of the things that God is trying to do right now is to help each of us grow more dependent on him in our personal walk with Jesus. I wonder if God is wanting to help us become better leaders of our marriages and better leaders of our families and actually teaching them and talking about his word at home. We have this great opportunity to do that. Here's a reality. We are free. We are free to read our Bibles. We are free to pray. We are free to preach it from the, the biggest medium that you could possibly Imagine we are free to love our families and do what we want to do. Don't get caught up in thinking that you're not free. You are free, especially free in Christ. The reopening of Washington State has four phases. These have not changed. Each phase is scheduled to be a minimum of three weeks. There are benchmarks that must be uh, met to move to the next phase and and then go to the next phase and the next phase and the next phase. Right now, phase one ends on May 26th, just in a couple of days. So that means that this next few weeks, that the next phase is you can meet with people, up to five people outside of your family per week. There's also some things that happen with businesses so that more businesses can open up. Phase three begins on June 16th. What phase three does is allows for 50 or less people to meet together under the guidelines of social distancing rules. Keep in mind, it's under the guidelines of social distancing rules. Our Warm Beach and Spanish campuses will be able to begin meeting with multiple services beginning on Father's Day, June 21st. Our office staff will continue working remotely, but will be coming in as needed under the essential business activity guidelines. Phase four, begins on July 7th, allowing large group gatherings with social distancing rules in place. We're planning to reopen the Smoky Point campus on July 12th. Keep in mind, all the social distancing rules apply. We're really trying to figure out how that's going to work, how many people we could actually fit in our auditorium and how many services we'll have to do. There'll be more announcements to come. We will follow all safety guidelines throughout this entire process. 
We are choosing to put others before ourselves. We are laying down our lives and taking up our crosses. This is extremely inconvenient and difficult, but it will help pe keep people safe. We are all suffering, some physically, emotionally, relationally, financially. That's all happening. It happens all the time. And we are really sorry for any suffering that you have incurred. And we're praying for you. I want you to know I pray for you every single day. I really believe that we have an amazing opportunity to serve our community in ways that we never would have thought of. This opportunity is not ending on July 12th. In fact, we're just beginning. God wants us to continue to serve and love our community in every way that we can. And I'm not sure all the ways he's going to have us lay down our lives, but there will be more and we will have the opportunity to serve. We are going to have more announcements and more details in the weeks to come. We are meticulously developing our reopening plan. One thing to take note of is that we will need to do many things differently as we reopen our facilities. Change, that's what we're talking about, is rarely convenient or fun. Because always, change always, it always, always, always means that we're going to lose some things that we loved and held dear. This is where denying ourselves and putting others first comes in. However, along with change comes great opportunity. Opportunity to meet new people and share the incredible hope of Jesus with our community. So barring any delays, our Warm Beach and Spanish campuses will reopen with multiple services of 50 people or less on Father's Day, June 21st. We will closely follow all the guidelines. Barring any delays, our Smoky Point campus will reopen with multiple services on July 12th, again, closely following all of the guidelines. We are also going to begin drive-in services at our Smoky Point campus on Sunday, uh, June 7th. So that's when we'll start drive-in church, and everybody is welcome to come, and we will closely follow all of those guidelines as well. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And I want to pray right now with all of us. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we need you. I pray for your wisdom and your guidance and your direction. I pray, Jesus, that you would encourage and lift up our church. I pray you would encourage and lift up our community. And I pray that you would help us to serve them and love them and care for them. We all pray, God, that you would end this virus. And we pray, Father, that you'd protect our country and our people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.